All right, so I uh, I got another request for um another uh, for a video on storyboarding, and um anyway uh I think I'd like to go over some of the basic building blocks of storyboards, and um just kind of before I go before I do that I want to talk a little bit about um the actual part where storyboarding fits into the whole story. So if we look at a story, um you know a story consists uh, I think of of a narrative and a plot. And um, the story is kind of a combination of the two. It's a, if we look at just, say, narrative, right? Narrative to me is a sequential event timeline. So that means that if we look at this, you know, I've made this kind of graph. If we look at all the individual points, right, going left to right, you've got your start. And as we move over to the right, you have a timeline, right? So the time is basically advancing. And every time there's an event, right, there's an order of events. There's a sequential order of events. That forms a narrative. Now, the important thing to remember is that the narrative itself um, happens in a forward chronological order. But when you look at a story, the narrative may not necessarily, uh, like when, when you look at a story, the events that are presented to the viewer may come in out of order. So sometimes the story, like if you look at a movie, the intro might just throw you in, in the middle of like a, a helicopter crash, bang, right? And, you know, you see some, some Marines getting out and trying to survive and all that stuff. And then, you know, they will fade to black and they'll say, you know, four years earlier, you know, so that's an example that the story is the viewer experience of a narrative. Um, things may come out of sequence. You may have things like flashbacks. So um, important not to get the two confused. Then if we look at a plot, and to me a plot is a narrative which has been arranged into a dramatic structure. And so, you know the story is is it needs a plot. Is, is like part, the plot is part of the story, and and the plot is is like an arrangement of a narrative. And so that's what I've done here. This to me is is like the plot of a story. So you know you, we might have a, a start. You know we might start with the story, uh, or start with our character, our main character, our protagonist. We'll have some exposition, and then something will happen. Something bad will happen. Like maybe he gets into a car accident, and and so we have falling action, right? So uh, or, or falling action to me the kind of ups and downs, these to me are, are the things where um, it's like story progress. It's protagonist pro uh, progress. So as the protagonist loses things or gains things, the, 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 you know, these plot points, they go up and down. And the time between these points, you know, this is like an actual scene playing out. So a whole scene would be from this point to that point. So you have the whole flow from point to point. And, um, you know, the, the, again, if you look at the horizontal kind of distance between them, this is like viewer time, right? This is like how long within the movie that we're playing. This is how much of the, the movie time we're using up. And so if there's a large kind of loss for the protagonist within a short amount of time, then you see this steep, steep falling action. And, um, you know, it, it's important to kind of uh, compare the previous um, compare the previous plot point to the next plot point. And you'll notice that I, I generally try to keep it, you know, up, up and down and up and down. So, you know, he'll struggle, he'll fail, he'll struggle. And then we'll have what I call a false victory, right? And this is where the, the hero realizes, oh, my God, you know, I've been fighting for the wrong side the whole time. And then, you know, he'll wallow in self-pity for a while. And then maybe people will say, come on, you know, you can do it. And, you know, we have what you have in a, in a stock market is, is a stock market trend. It's called a, a dead cat bounce. And, you know, you do this just before you really, really, you know, bring things down to the lowest, lowest, like, bottom of the, of the story. You know, this is like that part in, um, in, 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 what was it, in Toy Story, right? In Toy Story, where um, the first one where Buzz Lightyear realizes that he is just a toy, he's not a robot, you know, and you've got, you've, you've got, um, you know, Woody who comes along and says, you know, what happened, but, you know, what happened, Buzz? And, you know, it's like, and, and, you know, there's kind of this, this, part where he's basically wallowing in self-pity for a while and it's it's not until you know they're in Sid's room you know they're in Sid's room and and those um the, you know he meets all the the mutant the mutant toys and they put it back together again you know like that's kind of like the dead cat bounce where he gets his arm reattached um but you know he's basically it it, it takes um you know, it, it takes Woody. Woody has to, you know, basically explain to him, you know, what it means to be a toy. That being a toy is a really good thing, right? So we have kind of a near-death experience. We have an epic flashback. We have the great revelation, or maybe the damsel revives him with sex, and um, and you know, so so then we have, you know, in, in in some stories, you know, we often have something like a training montage, and um, and then we go up to this, you know, confrontation where we actually meet the uh, the big bad. Uh, villain and you know this is again you know just classic storytelling and this is just one plot of you know many possible plots that you can come with 
And it's at that point, you know, the villain reveals some sneaky bullshit shenanigans, which, you know, um, you know, realizes, you know, I'm your father, you know, or something like that. And, you know, so either we we cut there and go to another episode, but if it's not, then, you know, the hero usually uses something, some kind, some kind of sacrifice, you know. So hero uses sacrifice and, you know, it's super effective and the villain takes nine, 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 nine damage and, you know, he he dies and, you know, I guess... um. It's like that's like the high point, you know. The the, the this is why they call it the climax, and um, you know, and then of course the villain has this little death monologue, and we realize he wasn't such a bad guy after all. And then his you know his castle explodes, and then you know that we have an epilogue and some loose ends to tie up, and then it's you know happily ever after, and we fade to black. So you know this to me is like this is how kind of the whole dramatic structure of a story works. That you know you can see the whole kind of ups and downs and you'll notice that the, the ups and downs get gradually more and more violent, you know, as we as we, you know, move onwards. So you know, it's kind of important, you know, kind of um you you'll see that there is generally for the happy ending type thing, you know, you want it to generally be to end on slightly a higher note than it was when it started out. You know, you want the hero to we want to feel like the hero um, you know, is better off than he was when he started. You know, he there's some character development in there. Um, otherwise, you know, you can have tragedies and a, a tragedy can, can basically mean that things get better and better and better and better, you know, but then, um, they just bottom out. Or if you look at something like say Requiem of a Dream, you know, that is like a, a story that, that really, really just is like this descent into madness and, and everything is t- totally bot- you know, bottoming up. So anyway, um, let's talk more about the, the actual, uh, storyboarding. Um, maybe what I should do is I should, um, uh, let's see. So we're at 644. I'm just going to write down a quick note. Because I want to be able to put in. Actually, no, no. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'll put in a, a quick note in the uh, in, in the um, in the credit, not in the credits, in the description, so you can just click that and jump ahead. Just want to write this down. Okay, so 6:45. All right, and then so moving on. Um, yeah, so storyboarding. So storyboarding is taking you know an individual scene. It is taking one of these long things here, and we're going to show the flow from plot point to plot point. So thing is that usually when you write a narrative, you know, you've got, you know, um, something like this. And you say, uh, the hero works at a bakery. You know, so basically, you know, he says at a bakery. Right? So that's the first point. Then, then bakery explodes, right? So, you know, there's an explosion at the bakery and, and his bakery is in ruins. And then, you know, the debt collectors come along, you know, or something like that. Actually, you know what? Here's what I'll do. He's got a bakery, and then, you know, maybe, like, the, the, like, I don't know, mafia comes along, so death collectors come along. Or maybe they're the protectionists, right? So they're like, it would be terrible if something were to happen to this bakery, so protectionists. So basically, you know, the guy's saying, you know, well, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got a bakery, and these protectionists come along and say it would be terrible if something were to happen to this bakery, so pay us some protection money. Yeah, you know, and he's like, well, I don't need a, I don't need protection. I just have a shotgun. And so, and so like maybe later that night, you know, his bakery explodes, and um, and then now he's basically on the street. You know, he's destitute on the street. And he decides that he has to take. See what I mean? So this is, you know, the this is the the vertical timeline of a narrative. So we have these points, these points, these points, these points. But this is not a story in of itself because it doesn't talk about any of the stuff in between. It doesn't talk about, you know, how the how the actual scene plays out when the protectionists come um to to demand their money. This doesn't go over the whole scene for the explosion where he's where he's looking at all the pastries like, I don't know, exploding in a mushroom cloud one by one. Um so that's what I mean is that the the storyboard covers this kind of part. This is what we need storyboards for. So uh let's actually get into that. So hang on, I'm just gonna it's uh, nine eleven. 9-11, good. Okay, so the storyboards, the actual act of uh, storyboarding is we're going to be taking, well, we got to make all these pictures, right? So, I mean, if you've ever seen storyboards, they have all these little pictures, and um, I like to think of storyboarding the same way that I think of photography. So, in a way, we are we are taking pictures, but in this case, we're actually making pictures. Um, and what are we taking pictures of? You know, because it's one thing to have a camera, and it's another thing to you know, have a really, really good camera and to understand things like you know how to expose the film properly and how to focus the thing, how to work all the gigas and the controls, but that doesn't make you into a great photographer. 
So the thing that makes you into a great photographer is two things. Number one, choice of subject matter, the things that you will photograph. And number two are kind of the, um, the rules of composition, you know, how you will photograph from where you will photograph, how you will portray something, and the angle at which you, you know, the, the position, the perspective that you shoot something from. You know, you are going to lend perspective to a thing happening. You're going to lend perspective to the events. This is the reason um, for storyboarding. And so, so you know, you got to, you have to portray events according to where you place the camera. And at what point, you know, at what point will you take the shot? Because a story is a flow, you know, it's, it's this, this long flow. And maybe it's not bump up and down, but maybe it's more like this, right? So who knows? But you are going to be choosing certain points in the flow to shoot. And you're going to allow, you know, because you're doing storyboarding and you're not animating, um, you know, this, you're not animating this, um, you can't storyboard every single, single, you know, piece, right? So you have to, instead, you have to storyboard specific points that, and leave out the parts that, that, that people can fill in by themselves, you know, leave out the parts that people can fill out, you know, by imagination alone. So, you know, that, that's the thing. Those are the things that we want to take pictures of. So, anyway, I have a huge list of things that I'm just going to go through. So, first of all, people doing things to things. So, basically, if we have something like, say, the protectionists who are demanding money from the baker, right? So, in that case, um, to me, you know, I look for shapes. You know, like, sometimes I do look for shapes. Or I look for ways to, com you know, do any kind of um, compositional stuff. And this, to me, is, you know, the protectionists come in and they demand money from the baker. So that maybe the baker is, you know, at, at a countertop and maybe this is the protectionist and, um, you know, this is a, the mobster, really. That's what they are. They're, they're thugs. So the thugs over there, we have the cash register here and, um, you know, and yeah, so we have the, uh, the baker over here, right? So, you know, this sets up, you know, this kind of, we have him you know, much larger in frame. But then again, you know, I have this kind of feeling where the baker is actually higher in frame, right? So I'm going to adjust this. And this adjustment, okay, so so maybe we're, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to put a little X up there. Um, this adjustment is something that has, that is part of the story process, storyboard process. So in this case, maybe what I'll do is I'm going to, aha, I have an idea. Let's move the countertop higher. And this is where it's important to know your perspective. Maybe not so high, I just, um, there we go, something like that, and not maybe not like that. You know what? I'll, here, here's what I'll do. I'll I'll move the the countertop line of the countertop higher. I want to see the baker, you know, from above, kind of like maybe not so far above. But this is the important thing: is that you're going to be kind of mashing things around. Okay, let's just do adjustments. Okay, I want to have. Uh, I'm tilting the frame somewhat, and I'm putting the protectionist right here, and. And here, I'll just have him maybe put his hand on the countertop, like like that. There, perfect. Good. So now we can kind of see how, you know, the hand is now intruding on the baker's um, space, right? We, all this here is all just the back. It's all in silhouette, right? So uh, maybe, okay, now that I see this, I'm like, well, you know, screw the frame. That's the other thing about, um, about doing this kind of storyboarding stuff is you have to be willing to just, you know, hell with the frame because I need to have the cash register... Um, in view. So I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to like arrange things. So you got to work. Um, flex. You have to be flexible. You have to remain flexible, and don't get you know precious. Don't get locked into things. Uh, here we are. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right. So the storyboarding stuff requires that you look at it. You know how you intend to portray things, and you're gonna you're gonna change the composition around. You're gonna mash things around and choose a different angle until you get what you want. This is like when you take a picture with a with a photographer, a professional photographer taking a picture of, say, you know, a fashion photo shoot. Um, you know, I've, I've been to fashion photo shoots and seen uh, these these people work, and they will walk around the model and they'll go, no, okay, now no, do this, like you know, pose like this, pose like that, and they'll they'll go up and they'll go down and they'll they'll go to the side and they'll tilt the lens and they're they're trying to find a good angle, they're trying to find a good way to portray it, they're trying to find a, you know. And um, when you do, uh, you know, even just scenery, you know, scenic photography as a, as a tourist, you know, you you got to walk around and make sure that there's no, you know, light posts in the way of the, the, the castle that you're trying to take a picture of. You know, you got to adjust 
And, um, you know, sometimes you want to walk up and get closer to the subject or you want to, you know, back off a bit so you can, you know, get the whole thing in a frame. So that's what this process is. This thing that I'm showing you is, is this. This is the adjustment process. And if you don't do the adjustment process, okay, you're not storyboarding. I don't know what you're doing. You're drawing a picture. You have something in your mind. You're just going with the first thing that's in your mind. That is probably not the best thing that you could get, um, right? So don't get too locked into an idea. You got to be, you know, willing to mash things around. And 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 to do that, you have to know what kind of feel you want in your storyboard. So people doing things to things. Let's get a, another example of well, what do we have? You know, we have the um, the bakery exploding, right? So. Maybe the thing is that when I say the bakery explodes, it's not just the bakery explodes. Um, the, the bakery exploding is not a significant thing. It's it's significant to the baker though. That is you have to be able to to you know figure out significance. So here, hang on, let me let me just throw down a, a quick jot down a quick time note. So uh, 1530. Okay, so significance to a, the protagonist, right? This is this is the thing. The, the baker's exploding. The protagonist is losing the bakery. You have to understand the um, you know the implications of a thing happening. You don't just draw the bakery exploding. So what I would do is if I'm drawing this as a storyboard, okay, then I would show you know something like this. Here's the bakery, which is you know exploding, and um, have a storefront window, and maybe. I'll have, yeah, let's do it pure Hollywood style. It's going to be awesome. And so I have to show the baker, you know, like just jumping out, you know, through like all the broken glass. And, you know, like there's like, so he's jumping through his storefront window and there's, you know, an explosion. And there's like, there were, there were pastries everywhere. There were freaking bagels and, 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 and biscotti everywhere, you know, so yeah, there's like, and like French bread, yes, burning French bread, oh, must have burning French bread. <laughs> so yeah, you know, storyboards are something to get excited over. Storyboards are a lot of fun. And let's throw some like fire on him as well. Oh my God, I'm burning. So yeah, um, this to me is, is, a, is a storyboard, is, 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 a, is a much better storyboard action because it shows something happening to something. You know, it's an explosion. He's diving through a window and it's, you know, that is, that is really, really cool. And like maybe you'll have like a bagel about to hit the camera. Yeah. Okay. So, um, sorry, getting carried away. Uh, let's see. What's next? You know, and then here's another thing, right? We can say the, the bakery burns. You know, he, the, the, the baker watches his bakery burn to the ground. So, I mean, he's... You know, again, people doing things to things. You know, he's watching something. So, you know, we can have him here and uh, maybe... Okay, so he's kind of in this area. I haven't, you know, completely worked it all out. But um, let's put that there and let's put his bakery, you know, off in the distance. He's, he's watching. Okay, so and if anything, you know, it's basically like a line of buildings and, you know, there's other stores, you know, but it's only his store that was really affected. And so, you know, here's, he sees, you know... <laughs> And there's like, you know, fire rising and stuff. So yeah, okay, that's awesome. And then yeah, we can show him maybe maybe not so big here. You know, let's here's the thing is I mean, come on, he just had his freaking bakery explode. So let's make him look a little more pitiful than that. So we'll put him over here in frame. We'll make him smaller in frame. And he's like, Oh, my poor bakery. Okay, so that's 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 what I'll do. Okay. All right. So we make him small in frame, and uh, we show, you know, like a shadow there because, you know, the, the fire is like casting flames. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the, the flames are basically casting light, and they're casting a shadow behind him. So, you know, there, that's that. That is how I would handle it. Um, and you know, in, in terms of how much quality you need, you don't. <laughs> you don't need quality. Whatever. As long as you can understand it, that's all that matters. Um, you know, because you're going to be throwing things out anyways. Uh, you're going to be uh, you know, things might not work out. You're going to throw them out sometimes. Uh, you know, in, in this case, you know, I might even show that there's like, um, here, all the fire trucks are there, you know, and there's like firemen who are here and they're, you know, like they've got hoses and stuff and they're all, you know, like spraying water onto the building and, you know, he's just sitting there and maybe they're spraying water onto him. So, you know, he can look all pitiful in a puddle of water. Okay. So, I mean, you don't, 
if the moment you say you want quality, then you start to tighten up and you stop thinking about what you actually want to shoot. Um, because at that point, you're thinking too hard about, you know, the line quality and you're focusing on, you know, is the form right? It's perspective. Absolutely perfect. Blah, 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 blah. It's not important. It doesn't matter. Fuck it all. Um, okay. So uh, let's see what else we have. Right. Um, people going places, right? Because a lot of times I see, you know, people doing storyboards um, and they say, you know, he goes to this place and he goes to that place. And what they do is they just draw the place itself. And it's like, no, that's, if he's going to a place... You know, if, if we have something like uh, he's arriving at the bakery, he's arriving, um, you know, then what I would do is, you know, maybe what happens is let's draw the scene where, or, or the, the, the image where, um, the, or the beat where, you know, the, the protectionists arrive at his bakery. So here's what we'll do is we'll draw the bakery, you know, here and like the little door here. And um, you notice I like to do this upshot because I'm trying to make, you know, these guys feel kind of intimidating, right? So... Here's what I'll do is I'll I'll do that and I'll show you know these guys you know and they're like massive in frame they're like yeah here we are so we can make them and if I, if anything we they can be so massive all we need to see are their feet right doesn't matter we don't need to see the rest of them so we see their feet and there's another guy and maybe he's got a gun even you know so or you know maybe this is when they arrive to bomb his place right so you know maybe what happens is instead of a gun you know like let's Forget the gun. Let's give him like a Molotov cocktail. All right. So we'll give him like there. All right. He's got a Molotov cocktail. Maybe they both have Molotovs. Or maybe he's got like, I don't know, a hand grenade. Okay. So that's the thing about the storyboard. The storyboard doesn't need to be perfect. We're telling story. Okay. So just keep it to story. Um, don't, we're not, it's not illustration. It's, it's, we're trying to tell a story here, and yes, they can be crappy. They must be crappy, in fact, because if you are making amazingly beautiful, pristine storyboards, you are spending your time and your attention in the wrong place. Okay, so people going places, right? Uh, what's another example? You know, we can have, you know, maybe, maybe what happens is here's an example. We can show something like the cops arrive. The cops arrive, and they're, you know, here to, they're, they're all here to, like, I don't know, capture... Our, our protagonist, right? Or maybe, yeah, okay, so, you know, our protagonist is, maybe, maybe our protagonist is a thief, you know, he's like, he's like, um, from, I don't know, what's that, what's that uh, show? Aladdin, right? You know, you can have, like, modern-day Aladdin, and he's there, and he's, he's at the window, and he sees, you know, he's looking downwards, right? So, you know, we can look down, and we see all these, you know, we see the sidewalk here, and we see the other buildings on the side, right? And then we show, you know, okay, so now we show... I don't show cop car arriving like this, okay? This is what you do when you park normally. When cop cars arrive, they arrive like this. They converge, baby. They converge. And they're all out. And they're all busting into them, into that, that lower. There we go. So, you know, they're all flooding in. We've got people, we've got cops are here. Oh, shit. Hide, hide, hide the drugs. Flush the drugs. All right. So this is what we do. So this is an example. People going places, arriving, doing things, and keep the protagonists. You know, like like show how it means something to the protagonist. Okay. Show, set up those relationships. It's very important. You know, and and maybe if he doesn't notice, right? So I mean, the thing is, if the protagonist does not know that he's about to get you know, the cops flooding into his apartment, then uh, then you do it like this. In which case we show, you know, the apartment door, you know, in the mid and down the hallway, the nice kind of famous shot, and we see down the hallway and we see, you know, all these guys lined up at the sides, right? They're all at the sides. And maybe you have one guy who's there, you know, or maybe there's like the entry team, right? So you got the one guy in the front with like the battering ram type shield and you have a bunch of other guys back there, right? And meanwhile, the other people stand at the sides, right? So this is the thing is that you'll see that how I deal with people is just lumps there. That is a person. That is a man. If I really want, if I really feel like giving them extra detail, then it's like that. Um, you know, what you don't do is you don't do this. Okay, that's not good. Um, unless, okay. So anyway, um, what else? 
people going places, people going places. Any other examples I can give? Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can still... You know, I mean, so, sometimes what they'll do is you can do sequences, right? Sequences of things where you see a car, right? In this case, instead of a person, it's a car. And, you know, there are there are people inside, so person, person, person. And I'm just drawing those, you know, the, the headrests of the seat, right? So car is arriving, and what um, perspective? And, you know, we show it arriving at a place. Right, so that is an example. Another example is that I always like to show, you know, I don't just show a place and then, you know, I, I always need to have two things because to me, storyboarding is all about things happening to things, um, or you know, generally speaking, it's it's about things happening to things. All right, so let's move on. Sometimes you have things that are uh, storyboards can be about things that are just simply happening that are important. So. We have an event. We have an event that's occurring. Um, you know, in, in this case, uh, we'll go back to the bakery explosion, right? So that in itself is an event. Um, all right. So I mean, there are different ways in which you can portray this. We can portray this, or or maybe instead of that, we can show, ah, how about this? Um, someone's about to point a gun at the baker's head, right? So the gun, the the baker is about to be held at gunpoint. And we have a number of ways to do this, right? We can do this in such a way that the baker knows, you know, he is fully aware and he's observing this event. He is observing that, you know, the gun is being pointed at him. We can do something where we show he's not doing anything, right? But we show him standing there and the protectionist or the gangster, rather, the thug is simply there. We take a gun, we stick it at him. There he is, right? We have a bent arm, there's the body. So we have that, right? Maybe I would actually want to get a little bit more space, or maybe I want less space. You know, oh yeah, I, you know what? I want less space because, because I want to show that the gun is actually pressing up against his chest. So to do that, I'll just draw his chest here. I'll draw his face here. He's looking down. There, 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 right? So keep it fast, keep it simple. And maybe he's like, whoa, man, be cool. Be like, be cool, honey bunny, be cool, right? Don't shoot me, right? Or maybe if anything, you can even draw his hands up, right? He's got his hands up. Don't shoot me, please. So, you know, that is, an, it, that's, he's observing that thing ha happening. But meanwhile, you can look at the, um, the, the, the antagonist actually doing the thing to the protagonist. So, that's something you can have. Um, you know, he can be a, well, you know, even if we look at this other scene here, you know, where the um, he's watching, you know, his building burn up, you can look at the firemen and think the firemen themselves are observing this, you know, this whole scene as well. So this people observing, they're spectators. So you kind of have to uh, figure out an involvement level for each character. Everybody in the scene will have a different invol involvement level. Okay, but then you can have things that happen that are not being observed. And it's really still the same thing, right? We can have a huge explosion and like show, you know, some guy who's like, I don't know, I guess he's just so cool. Here, let me, here we are. Let's put a big explosion and, you know, rocks and stuff and like giant cars and stuff that are like smashing. Okay, so we've got like a truck. Yes. Aha, take that truck. And, you know, we just have this guy who's such an incredible badass, and he's just like, he's just like, he's just walking away, man. He don't care. He's like, haters going to hate. I don't care. I'm just going to walk and do my own thing. And, yeah, I'm just like, my, like, clothing and my jacket is, like, being ruffled and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm so cool. I don't even need to look at the explosion. Mr. Indifferent. And, you know, so that's the thing, that you can just show a thing, and it's where you put him, you know, in relation to it, and his reaction to the thing, he's not actually observing it. But we can have things like, say, let's go back to the gun pointing example. I can do something like this. And by doing this, you notice how much space I added right back here, right? The reason why I add all that space there is because the moment we see this, 
Um, you know, the fact that we have the camera moved over, the camera frame is all the way over here. We, as the audience, expect that we've moved the camera over here because we're thinking that something's going to come in on this side. You know, it could be anything. It could be, you know, it could be a gun, right? And, and it could be a hand with a gun, right? It could be, I don't know, a big creepy tentacle with, like, suckers on it. Right? So that's the thing, is that it could be, I don't know, you, you know, and it doesn't always have to be something threatening, you know, it could almost be... Another person who's simply coming up behind him saying, you know, hey, what you looking at on the internet? Right? So he's like going dick a dick a dick a dick a dick on like a, a you know, on a, on, a, on a monitor, right? So like, that's why we move the camera over. We move the camera over because we want to show that something is about to happen to him. You know, he's not necessarily facing it, you know, but the thing is that where you put the camera, whether you shift it left or right or, you know, where you put that space, you know, the fact that I've left that empty space there, you know, gives us the expectation that something is going to go there. If we do it the other way, let's say we move the camera, let's, let's move the frame over here, you know, we expect that there's going to be something over here. Um, although, generally speaking, if it's in front that way, then you're probably going to have to show it. You're probably going to have to show, you know, that, that, um, you know, that, that, that something is actually happening here. So, you know, that, that, you know, you actually have to show the thing that is, that is in frame. Um, it's Cactuar. Okay. So anyway, uh, what else do I need to do? Um, people observing offense, people not observing offense. Okay, so let's let's put down another time marker. Okay, so the time is thirty one thirty six. Thirty one thirty six. All right, so close up detail observations. All right, so an example of that would be, you know, uh, oh here here's a good one. How about how about when a person looks in a micro microscope, right? So what I won't do is I won't start. Well, I will definitely wind up with a frame that looks like this, and we have like. A little bacteria, and he's like, dee -dee 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 -dee. I'm a little bacteria buggy thing. Dee -dee -dee -dee. I'm floating around, and there's like other, I don't know, other things that. Okay, so we have, you know, some bacteria and germs and stuff um, in here, right, under a microscope. But again, the important thing is that we need something that happens prior to this. So what I would do is I would show, um, you know, this this needs to be part of a sequence, right? So we can have something where, say, a guy is here in the room. Okay, he's he's at a table. He's at the microscope thing. All right, so I'm just drawing. You know the, the 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 microscope with like the multiple lenses, kind of like kind of like a cow udder, and uh, and then there's a thing there. There's like a little slide there, and like you know, okay, so this is our microscope, okay, kind of poopy, but it's like one of those binocular microscopes. Those things are like badass, and they're super expensive and stuff. So okay, so we have a guy here, and you know he's sitting by the microscope, and you know you could even have something where um, he'd say, you know, he's here at the microscope. The next thing you see would be something like the actual microscope close up, you know, it's got these little slide clamps and, you know, we have the lens here and, you know, he pushes a slide, you know, so on the next frame here, let me just be super lazy, super lazy time, activate, one, two, okay, and so, you know, at this point, he pushes a slide, right? We see him push a slide with his sample of whatever it is, you know, onto there. And, you know, we can show his thumbs in frame, you know. He pushes the slide, hands enter the frame, they push the slide, and it slides into place. And then naturally, to me, the next, um, the next step is to show something where, um, you know, we can show him. We can we can do a number of things. We can show. Uh, here we go. It's kind of another classic view. 
will show the lens pieces of the microscope. Right. And so he puts his head up to that. Right. So the other one we won't see because his head's obscuring, but this is this is what we get, right? Something like this. And you know, you can even show the light. The light from the microscope is like beaming onto his eyeball. You know, like that's this is this is very kind of common. I've seen this shot many many times before. So you know, he bends down to look into the microscope. You know, and maybe his glasses are up on his forehead and stuff. So I mean, these are the things that you can you know just consider. Okay. So any blah blah blah. Um, you know, and then we can show you know the next slide, which is like this. You know, we can show the bacteria slide, or we can simply show him, you know, from another angle, right? We can show him, um, you know, we we just restart the sequence and start over again, um, you know, after he puts a slide in, in frame, and uh, we have the double thing here, and we show him, you know, here, you know, in front of the microscope. And then, you know, afterwards we show him, you know, bending down, looking at the microscope. So as you can do this as a sequence. There, now he's looking through the microscope. All right. So that's an example. All right. So he's up, then he's down. Do it in a two-part sequence. You can do it like that. Um, you know, these are ways I think of dealing with, you know, close-up de detail observations that you always set them up here. All right. You might have something where, you know, he looks into a box, then we see. You know, he looks into a box, pulls out a slide, looks at this thing, slips the slide in, right? So like, you can just, the important thing is uh, to not leave out any kind of uh, intermediary actions. How about reloading a firearm, right? So we show a guy, and he's like, got his gun out. And of course, I'm doing a lot of these things with firearms and guns and explosions because this is, you know, I'm, I'm coming from, you know, big, Big budget Hollywood, you know, the usual classic kind of films, which are all about <laughs> guns and explosions. Bay explosions from Michael Bay. Um, and so, you know, I would show something like that. Oh, he's got the gun. And then, you know, maybe the gun's out, so it goes click. And, um, yeah, so, you know, now I guess what you can do is we can show the same gun up here. And we can show, you know, the, the, he thumbs the cartridge release and the magazine falls out, right? So this is the thing, is that we're still on the same angle, right? We're still on the same, the camera has not really changed position. We simply zoomed in on the thing that has happened, right? Because when you do a close-up, you cut out a lot of information. Uh, and as a result, you know, if we simply zoom in on it, right, or we simply jump cut to something like this, we're making use of the information established in the, pre in the previous shot. So, you know, he's doing a firearm reload like that, and um, and then we can either we can either pan over, right? We can either pan over. So right now, what we've done is we've zoomed into here, right, and we can pan over to you know his side where his magazine, his, his extra magazines are kept, right, and we can pan over and follow his hand as it goes back to grab the magazine right there. So, you know, this, this, this is the thing is that, you know, or simply we don't even have to necessarily zoom in on the magazine. We can simply show that his hand goes up, um, you know, simply goes away from the gun, goes to his belt, and when it comes up, it has a magazine in there, right? So that's the thing is this is an example of, um, you know, viewers that are able to, you know, kind of piece together and, and understand, you know, from their prior experiences what's going on. Um, you know, so you don't have to board everything. Uh, in fact, if you really want to work out some economy, um, you know, figure out exactly which ones you need, uh, exactly which frames you're going to need, and, uh, and and ditch the rest. But I say draw them all anyways. Uh, it's good practice. And then, you know, when you get better and you know exactly which scenes you need to draw, then draw them. Okay. Uh, let's do another timestamp. 3907. Okay, good. Conversations. Oh gosh, this is another one, right? It's like conversations. Uh, nobody likes seeing two guys sitting in front of each other like this, with one guy saying one thing, the other guy saying another thing, and then you know this 
happening and this happening and this is boring. Um, you know, this kind of conversation stuff is dead. Dead as fried chicken. Don't do it. Um, or, I mean, you can if you're really trying to show a boring scene because the only thing I think that could really improve this scene would be like, uh, here, hang on. Let me just stretch that frame up. And, uh, yeah. Oh, so, okay. So, I mean, the only thing I think that could improve this would be if, like, some guy, you know, like, comes bursting through the window and shoots both people in the fucking head because it's boring and he's like, ah, isn't this exciting? Okay, that's the only reason why you would set up a boring scene is because you're setting it up for the sake of contrast. <laughs> We've got incoming fire, outgoing brains. <laughs> okay, next. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, the thing is if you're going to do a conversation, you know, show people trying to do things. And what I don't mean, oh, I mean, okay, like this, this is okay, right? You can show... Uh, two people, and they're, you know, at a computer, you know, and, you know, they're, at least this, at least now we've got, you know, something going on. He's like, like pointing, and he's like, and they're, they're like, they're hacking, ha ha, and he's like, don't worry, I'll make like a, a GUI in Visual Basic and, you know, use it to track their IP address, right? Okay, so at least, you know, this is exciting and interesting to look at. Um, Right, so show them doing something during this conversation. Uh, you know, another way I guess that you can do, you know, showing people having conversations is, you know, conversation during, say, let's have a guy here and another guy here and another guy here, a three-way conversation, not just between two people, but actually a ménage à trois, and show them having guns pointed at each other. Ha ha, gun. <laughs> Well, like a standoff. Actually, you should see the Saturday Night Live skit, uh, the standoff, which is absolutely amazing. And it shows some really, really good storyboarding. Um, it is incredibly well done. And you can look at it for ideas. Right? So, you know, show the three-way um, standoff. Okay? So this is, you know, another example. People, you can have a conversation like this, a circular composition. Um, you know, you can have conversations which are very active. You know, if one person is threatening another, then, you know, again, it comes down to poking a finger, you buddy. Or actually, here, not, well, wait, wait a second. No, first I'm going to draw that finger straight, then I will draw it outstretched and boink. Let's break the finger. Ha ha. And now he is talking and jabbing his finger at this other guy very rudely. Whoops. He's freaking rude. Okay, so there. Now he's jabbing his finger, and we have, like, you can do this in a storyboard, okay? You can show, you know, <laughs> jab, jab. And, you know, I'm here. You can even, like, cave in, you know, the material around there just a little bit, just, just for effect. Jab, jab, jab. Jab, jib jab. Okay, so you know this is another thing, and you know meanwhile he can be saying his his word, you know he can be saying his stuff, you know, so he can be saying, blah blah, blah blah, and you know if you're doing comic books, then you know you can do things where it's like. The things that he says are like really hurtful. So you know, even the speech balloons can be like jabbing into him. You know, so they go into him, and then they there's like an entry wound here, and then there's like an exit wound. All right. So there's things like that that you can do. Uh, actually, maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll do it like this. Let me undo that. Let's undo. Actually, wait. No, that's fine. If, or maybe what I'll do is I'll draw it as an arrow. All right, so all the things that they're saying are like jabbing him. This poor guy, he's getting so jabbed. So much penetration. Okay, so, you know, these are these are things you can do, right, for conversations, to make the conversations a lot more interesting. 
Um, you know, you can even have, you know, showing the reactions where, like, one person is going, blah, blah. And the other person, you know, show reaction. He's like, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's busy daydreaming about something else, all right? Or maybe, or maybe this person is like, you can even say it's like he's talking in one ear and out the other, right? So like this is, all right, so these are things that you can do. So the words are just going in one ear and out the other, and it's like, nag, nag, nag. Nag, nag, and he's like, whatever, I don't care, I'm dreaming about something else instead, like, I don't know. Okay, so, you know, I think that's, um, oh, that's basically all I have in my checklist, so I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say, and uh, thank you for watching, I hope this was useful, uh, goodbye.